Hi everyone, this is Surat Bharat Gorele from ENH I Secure Private Limited. In this presentation, we are going to see about integration of SAP Success Factor application using SAP Success Factor connector and the use cases that we can implement it. In this presentation, we are going to see about introduction to SAP Success Factors, picklist and OData information, SAP SF connector. Delta aggregation, SAP SF integration prerequisite, SAP SF configuration, and the use cases that we can implement it. Let us understand what is SAP SF system is and how identity now support to integrate it. SAP Success Factors Employee Central module is a cloud-based next generation core HR solutions that holds a lot of information related to employees and other modules of SAP Success Factors consume in this information by integrating with SAP Success Factors Employee Central. In SAP Success Factors Employee Central, which are the different data models used and how to manage these data models? In this blog, we also cover how to manage picklist and create picklist value, events and event derivation, different business rules and their applicability different type of workflow like uh, transfer, promotion, escalation, position management, role-based permissions, permission groups, manage business configuration, employee profile, DG filters, mass changes, HRI sync mapping, input employee data and the employment information, domain and the different action that you can perform after creating the reports. This blog is meant for HRIS administrators business users or consultants working on SAP Success Factors Employee Central module. Success Factors Employee Central module has different types of components. So let us dis discuss one by one. The first component is SAP Success Factors Employee Central. SAP Success Factors Employee Central is one of the important component of SAP Success Factors SCM suite that records complete details of an organization employees. Employee centers allow the user to view, maintain, and report on employee and the organization data. The second component is SAP Success Factors Payroll. It helps in data replication, monitoring, payroll configuration, payroll system assignment, ATC. The third component is Performance and Goal Management. Performance and Goal Management are the core models of SAP Success Factors. Provide the solutions for performance management and goal management. Support organization to deliver the best employee review and employee goals. The fourth component is compensation. SAP Success Factors compensation is a complete solution that enables an organization with an efficient process of basic pay, short term pay, and the long term incentives, variable pay, ETC. The fifth component is recruiting. SAP Success Factors recruitment provide the best tool to recruit highly efficient employees. Success Factors recruiting is divided into further three modules: recruiting management, recruiting marketing, and the recruiting posting. The last and sixth module is learning. SAP Success Factors learning manages the entire learning life cycle in an organization. Let us understand what is OData. OData is an open data protocol used in a web technologies. OData is used by SAP to make SAP data accessible to other platforms so that the non-SAP users can also access this data to develop web applications, website, mobile applications, etc. OData fetches the data from one or many database and table with the help of select, insert, delete, or modify statements. It is based on the HTTP frame framework. In other words, in the application layer, we have an internal table and that internal table data is passed out through OData and to the HTTP. In a single HTTP request, you can get both the data and metadata or table structure. You can also do CRUD queue operation, which is mean by you can create the data on the database, request the data, update the data, delete the data, or you can perform various queries operation on the database over the internet. 
ODATA protocol standardized pr protocol for creating and the consuming APIs. ODATA build on the core protocols like HTTP and commonly accepted methodologies like REST. The result is a uniform way to expose fully featured data APIs. ODATA provide both standard for how to represent our data and a metadata method to describe the structure of data and the operations available in our API. Success factors ODATA API services is based on ODATA version 2.0. The ACM suit ODATA API is a success factors web services API based on ODATA protocol intended to enable access to data in a success factor system. The API is a data oriented. This API provides method for cross style access. This ODATA API is used to configure entity. Each success factors module can be accessed using its own set of entities. Let us understand what is picklist. A picklist is a configurable set of options from which a user can make a selection, typically in a drop down menus or smart search list. We can define the picklist using our system to limit the values. A user can enter a form preventing them to entering an invalid values. For example, there are many places in the system where user must select a country such as, such as employees home address in SAP Success Factors Employee Central or a location of a job requisition in SAP Success Factors Recruiting. The country picklist defines the countries that are available for a user to select in the user interface. Picklist can also have a parent-child relationship in which options in the child picklist are associated with the options in the parent picklist. There are sometimes known as the cascading picklists. Let us understand what is SAP SAP system here and how Identity Now support to integrate it. Identity Now supports account management of SAP success factor system data that contains Loading of SAP Success Factors account to identity now, that is account aggregation, provisioning of user to SAP SS system, delta aggregation. Also, identity now supports below information types from SAP SAP employee system, accounts type to manage, filter criteria for employees, aggregate termination date by employee status, and the provisioning configuration. Let us understand what is delta aggregation. Success factors support delta aggregation for accounts. Delta aggregation aggregates new accounts or accounts that have changed since the last aggregation. In delta aggregation, any attribute change that comes under an effective date entities of employees or a user with employment are aggregated. The delta for success factors get populated based on the last modified on-field which get used in the SAP Success Factors Employee Central Compound Employee API. The delta aggregation can capture delta max for the last 90 days. This means that any data change done prior to 90 days of the last successful account aggregation timestamp are not captured and a full account aggregation is required. If there are any changes in the configuration of the application, run a full account aggregation before running the delta aggregation. Let us see prerequisite for SAP SAP integration. At least virtual appliance needs to be configured in order to have communication between Identity Now Cloud and SAP Source. However, Cellbound recommends to have two virtual appliances in a cluster. Permission data required. Test connection to trace the connectivity from IDN Cloud to SAP HR source. Account aggregation to aggregate account details to IDN Cloud. To perform connection task must have the following permissions. SAP SF API user login, employee central HRIS SOAP API. For example, the success factor source aggregate the employee data from the success factors managed system based on the picklick configuration which is configurable set of options or selection list used to populate data input field which of a number of predefined value 
in the SAP success factors that can be obtained. Next for aggregation, we require the following permission. Manage user, manage, export, employee. Metadata framework, admin access to a metadata or data API. Manage system properties, which require picklist management and picklist mapping setup. Employee central API, we required employee central foundation or data API, which is the read only API. Also, we required employee central HRIS or data API. This is also an read only. Manage role based access permissions. Let us see prerequisite for SAP SF integration. In success factor, log in to the provisioning access console. Select company and navigate to company settings. Under web services, enable the following checkboxes. SF API. This is required for SAP SF API success factor data API. It is a SOAP web services designed for importing and exporting data to from SAP success factors instance. Employee central SOAP API also need to enable. To provide information about global assignment, such as dependent company and employee on a global assignment, we need to enable global assignment management and enable dependent management. Let us see prerequisite for SAP SAP integration. For configuring the base URL for identity now tenant, we need to configure data center wise. The base URL will vary. From data center to data center. In this blog, I have provided the link for SAP API URLs for different data centers. Let us see about SAP SF schema. The application schema is used to configure the object written from a connector. When the connector operations are performed, the schema is supplied to the methods on the connector interface. This connector currently supports accounts object. Accounts object are used when building identity link objects. In SAP success factors, we have 48 default attributes. For the additional custom attribute we want to fetch, then we need to add in the additional attribute mapping in the source configuration on UI. Once all the prerequisites are met, we can proceed with the SAP SF integration. Create a new source in Identity Now. Select a source type as a SAP success factors and connector type as a direct connector. After filling the metadata for source such as name, description and a source owner, you will be prompted with the base configuration page that contains metadata that is filled. Select an virtual appliance cluster. Select governance group for source management as none. We can associate a source with a governance group that can grant select user as a sub-admin user level. Sub-admins can perform some actions only can source associated with the governance group they are the member of. The source and the user receiving the sub-admin level user must both be associated with the governance group. Click on save and move to the connection settings tab. Once base configuration is done, then we can proceed with the connection setting where we need to fill base URL, authentication type, grant type, we need to fill company ID, client ID, user ID, and followed by the private key of SAP SF source. Post filling the connection details, click on save and move to the aggregation setting. Once connection setting is done, then we can proceed with the aggregation setting. In aggregation setting, we need to provide following details. In the account setting, select an account type to indicate whether the source manage employees or the users. In filter criteria, for employees, enable aggregate primary employment to include primary employment attribute in employee aggregation. This applies to active and future dated employee. 
if we disable aggregate primary employment, the source aggregate the most recent employment attributes. Aggregate's primary employment is disabled by default. Note, select aggregate primary employment to include the primary employment attribute in employee or user aggregation. This is applicable for active and the future dated employee. If we disable aggregate primary employment, the source aggregate the most recent uh, employment attributes. Enable aggregate future employee if we want to aggregate future hires. When this is disabled, we can see a X mark. If it is enabled, you can see the blue tick mark. There are different values for the future employees. Where default is for 30 days, zero means aggregate no future hires. If minus one, which means aggregate all the future hires. Or if we have positive integers, which means aggregate all the future hires within the specified number of days. Click aggregate inactive employees if you want to aggregate inactive employees record. When this is disabled, we can see the black X mark. If this is enabled, we are able to see the blue check mark. By default, the value is 30 days. If we keep as a zero, which means aggregate only active employees. If we give minus one, which means aggregates all inactive employees. Or else we can give positive integer, which means aggregate inactive employees within the specified number of days. Click the delta aggregation if you want to aggregate new accounts or accounts that have changed since the last aggregation. When this is disabled, we can see the black X mark. And when this is enabled, we are able to see the blue tick mark. Please save the configuration. Once aggregation setting is done, then we can proceed with the pickle setting. In the pickle related setting, we need to have configure a pick list mapping and the O data mapping. A pick list is a configurable set of options or a selection list used to populate a data field having one or more predefined value in the success factor system. This is basically a set and the value in a set. Cell point aggregate the data from SAP success factors managed system based on the pick list configuration. Cell point provide a default pick list, but we can add additional custom or standard attributes. OData is a web protocol for querying and updating data, applying and building on a web technology such as HTTP to provide access to information of SAP SF. We can aggregate debt by employee status. Below are the status for enable and the disabled employee. We can give enabled, disabled, active, for log, dormant, discarded, unpaid leave, retired, paid leave, termination, or the suspended. By default, the success factor source will be aggregate the termination date by following employee status. F which stating for log, R which stating retired, and T which stating the terminated. Once you're done, click on the save. Once pick list setting is done, then we can proceed with the additional setting. In additional setting, configure optional setting to modify the aggregation page size, API server URL, and API timeout. Enter page size to specify number of record fetch in a single call. We must use a number between 200 and 800. The default value is 200. Enter API server. URL if success factor API URL is different than the base URL. Success factor API timeout duration its default value is 5 minutes. Save the configuration. Once additional setting is done, then we can proceed with the advanced setting. We can use the advanced setting to update existing success factor speak list mapping and add additional attribute. Success factors pick list mapping is for update operation only. Enter the pick list mapping as per our tenant configuration. 
In additional setting, you can customize the aggregation of attributes or add any custom attributes by defining the attribute name and the navigation path that the connector uses to aggregate from SAP success factors. The success factor source support provisioning of the following attribute business phone, business extension, business phone country code, username, primary email address, etc. The success factor source consider the primary email address and the business phone as a primary mode of communication. For the additional custom attribute, if we want to fetch, then we need to add the additional attribute mapping. The navigation path will be provided by SAP SF team in the source configuration you need to keep. Make sure we need to add in the additional attribute account schema as well. Once you're done with the configuration, click on the review and test. Review all the configuration you have done and test the connection. In the SAP SF integration attribute sync, this is basically for the mover scenario. If the value of the attributes is changed in the SAP success factor, so the same value will be replicated in the target system. Here on UI, you are able to see uh, in the first column, uh, we are able to see the identity attribute, which is from the SAP SF. And the second column, we are able to see the account attributes, which is from the target system. If we click on the sync with the identity, the following attributes, if the value is changed in the SAP success factors, same will be replicated in the target system. Coming to use cases that we can implement in the SAP SF application, we can manage the complete end-to-end -end life cycle of an employee, right from joining the organization to leaving the organization. Here we are going to cover joiner, mover, leaver, and the rehire use case. Let us understand each use case one by one. In the joiner use case, a new record will be added in the SAP success factor system by HR team. Once new record is added, by using the account aggregation, all account details will be fetched into the identity now. Once all the details will be fetched, in the identity now, the identity will be created in the identity now. Once identity is created, the birthright access will be given. The birthright, which means the basic access, for example, Office 365, VPN access, ETC. Once birthright provisioning is done, then the account will be created into the target applications. This is for the preparing his assets such as laptop, headphones, etc. Once account is created, OU is assigned to that user into the target application. In the mover scenario, the existing record will be updated by HR in the SAP success factors. Once those fields are getting updated, after the aggregation in the identity now, those respective fields will be updated. Once fields are updated, depending on promotion, demotion or a location change, the attributes value will be changed into the target application and the OU movement will be happened in the target application. In the lever scenario, HR will update the termination date attribute into the SAP success factors system. Once the value is changed, the lifecycle state attribute in the identity now will be changed. If the value is for lifecycle state is inactive, then all the uh, um, access will be deprovisioned and the, uh, all the accounts will be get disabled. 
in the rejoiner scenario the rejoiner scenario depends on every organization's requirement generally the rehire is treated as a new joiner and will undergo the same process as the joiner in the organization this will vary as per the requirement thank you please follow our socials for more technical updates